All right, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel, and we had CPI data yesterday, so we're going to go through that. I'm going to do that first, talk about the Fed for a second, uh, then I'm going to do the Bitcoin news and get into some charts. I've, pre I've prepared this summary here um, of a couple of questions. I had a few people reach out to me and say things along the lines of this. They said, well, look, I don't understand what's going on. They said CPI is lower than last month, but only just by a bit. Even though core CPI is higher, both really are still high. Um, the markets went down in the morning, which kind of made sense, or, or, or upon release of the news, they went down, which kind of made sense to these people. And then we got a strong reversal, which they said didn't make any sense to them at all. So they're asking me what's going on. Um, and I actually think this is quite straightforward, and I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you when we get to the charts, you'll see the technicals and the cycle counts kind of tell us that everything is doing exactly what we expected it to do. We could even go as far as ignoring all of this CPI stuff and just looking at the TA and the cycles and we would have basically expected this price action anyway. So I'm going to explain this. I'm going to show you the data. US CPI. So month over month was above forecast and the previous month. We have, however, year on over year data at 8.2%. This, this is the fourth month in a row where CPI is apparently coming off, even though admittedly this is fractional, of course. This is, you know, we're talking about 0.1%. You can hardly say this is a massive decline in inflation. Meanwhile, core CPI is right in line with the previous month month over month and year over year it's actually going up okay so this is a problem a lot of this is to do with shelter shelter is a lagging indicator but either way this is a very mixed bag this is a mixed bag of data kind of some of it's up some of it's down it's, it's all still really high let's be honest so what is actually going on here well it's important to point out that like i said this is the fourth decrease so i think a lot of that is being priced in okay the inflation is coming off even if only marginally here we go 9.1 8.5 8.3 and now 8.1 so it's still hot but it is going down we can say based on these numbers that it, this likely means there are more hikes coming 75 basis points is now priced in this is now priced in at the next fed meeting the next fed announcement is this is this is priced into the market so it's important to point out that markets don't really care about bad data what they really care about is uncertainty. What they what they really care about is the the unknown. Okay, markets hate uncertainty. And before yesterday's readout, nobody really knew whether we were going to see a 50 point hike or less, a 75 point hike, or whether 100 plus was on the table. No one really knew that. It's difficult for a market to price in something when it doesn't know. Okay, it has to kind of guess, and then that's where the volatility comes from because markets have to readjust based on what the consensus is. And right now. We at least have clarity. The markets know, okay, most probably a 75 basis point hike is coming. We know what inflation is. We also know inflation is going down. So the markets can digest this and, and carry on doing what they're going to do. Whilst we're in a period of volatility, they're also not really behaving any differently to what we'd expect based on the cycle counts and TA, as I've already said. So in summary, I would say that this is likely more of a non-event than anything else. Importantly, inflation is coming down, although also importantly, it's still high. So because it's still high, it likely means more rate hikes are coming. But at least we have clarity on that now. At least we know that one, inflation is coming down. And two, likely there, are, there is at least one more hike. Although we kind of already knew that, if you think about it. We, we already knew to expect at least one more 75 basis point hike and possibly up to a total of 125 basis points before the end of the year, before the Fed would even entertain pivoting, if you believe what they say. Before we move on, it's important to point out that we are indeed at 8.1% CPI. But however... In the real world, in the real world, it's at least double this. And remember, Pepsi has exposed the fraud of the CPI by revealing the year-over-year -year price hikes of 17%. That's double the government's official estimate. 17% likely represents a much better indication of a true annual rise of cost of living than the 8% CPI gain. So remember, 8.1% is nothing to celebrate because in the real world, it's considerably higher than that. If you want to go and see exactly why I referred to this metric as the CP lie number, everything in the CPI is, is completely fake. The inflation data is, is a lie and I've made a video here for you so you can go and check that out if that's the sort of thing you want to see. This contains a full breakdown of how the CPI metric is calculated and exactly why it is a lie. Moving on, remember the Fed always lies, not just about CPI, but they tell us that crypto is unlikely to become a substitute to fiat just weeks after announcing their Fed Now CBDC program. Here's the Fed Now service that they announced in September the 2nd, okay, straight from the horse's mouth, as you could see. So which one is it? Are we going to have digital payments or are we not? You know, at the same time, remember the Fed said inflation is transitory. Do you remember this? All the way through 2021, inflation is transitory. It's just, just a short period of time. 
Okay, that was a lie. Do you also remember the Fed said there was no way they would consider hiking 75 basis points as well, five months ago? And then, then what do they start doing? Start to hike in 75 basis point increments. So the Fed always lies. And look at this, the US Treasury Secretary Yellen says, I'm not seeing anything in markets that causes me to be concerned. On October the 11th, okay? The following day on October 12th, she says, I'm concerned about the loss of adequate liquidity in treasuries. <laughs> I mean, you just can't trust a single word these people say. One thing you can trust though is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is based on mathematics. You don't need to trust because you can verify with Bitcoin. And speaking of Bitcoin, investment app Betterment is going to offer Bitcoin and crypto to 700,000 customers and it has $33 billion in assets under management. So this is more money, even more money that is going to continue to flow into Bitcoin and into crypto. Here is a quick video of somebody using Lightning, as you can see, to pay for small goods. That looks like a basket of chips. Fries, as the American brothers and sisters might say. You can see how quick this is. You hold up a QR code, you scan the QR code, tap confirm, and there it is, received. Okay, so to say this doesn't work as currency is ludicrous. It absolutely does. And I love to see this, especially because I've been in this space long enough to remember how clunky this thing has been at times. So this really is development. This really is able to compete with fiat currency and Visa and MasterCard type payments. Also, check out what's going on in Mexico. Huge news out of Mexico. A Mexican senator has said, let's switch to Bitcoin and make it legal tender. Are we about to see Mexico become the third nation to make Bitcoin legal tender to adopt the Bitcoin standard? Remember, if they do this, it's going to put pressure on other nations to do it because game theory will play out. This will cause FOMO amongst other nations. If you are a nation leader, do you want to see everyone else start to adopt the Bitcoin standard and do well and profit from having a hard currency that is resistant to inflation in a time where inflation is destroying every other fiat currency? Of course, you do not want to let your neighbors get away with such things. So you are going to be forced to adopt Bitcoin as the standard for your country and accept it as legal tender in your nation too. Kanye has had his bank account terminated by JP Morgan because he said he was pro-life. Let that sink in. I don't know what pro-life, <laughs> I don't know what pro-life or Kanye is, but the point is, and the reason I bring this to your attention is because if you can have your bank account terminated, if you can have your bank account closed out because of something you said, then you really have to assess whose money this is. You really have to ask yourself the question, do I actually own the money that I keep there? Of course, the answer is no. Only if you own physical Bitcoin on a cold wallet, can you call it your money? And the same is true of gold. Only if it is in your hand, physical gold in your hand, can you say that you own it? So just before we get into the charts, we're seeing things like this, bullish engulfing, MACD cross, higher lows, all of this looks very, very bullish. Does this mean the S&P is about to reverse? Well, I don't think so. I don't think so. Again, there's a lot of, a lot of games get played. I've been saying this all week. Don't give the market makers your stops. Trade safe. Don't have excessive leverage. Keep an eye on the cycle counts. All of these things are very, very important. And whilst this looks very bullish, and whilst it could certainly roar higher out of here, this could well end up being the low. The cycles, they give us an alpha. They give us an edge. They give us a count that tells us that we need to be a bit more patient and we're still not really there yet. So I'm going to get into the charts and show you that. Um, I've just got one more slide for you. The bear market started in February 2021 when breadth peaked. Okay, this is breadth would be the number of stocks taking part in the rally or the decline. People are acting like this is early and there's another 50% drawdown to come. It's not. This is already very long in the tooth. An opportunity always exists when the crowd thinks it knows an unknowable future. Bet where the expected value is highest. I have been getting increasingly bullish because sentiment is deteriorated to the lowest I've seen in my entire career. I can, it's so much worse than even 2008. Okay, so anyway, with all this said, let's get into some charts. I'm going to start with, look, the dollar for now is topped. Okay, so what's going to happen? It's too early to tell. Um, I think a test of this red line is coming at some point, but anything can happen, right? It's Friday, not too interested in that. Let's go ahead and look at the S&P. So what have we seen really? Well, the lows for now are still holding. We've breached the lows, come back down, breached the lows again, and now recovered them. But what do we know? And what have I been saying over and over and over again? We know there's a cycle low due somewhere between the 28th of October and say the 3rd of November-ish. Of course, it could come earlier, it could come slightly later, but we know in this timing window, plus or minus 10%, we are going to see a cycle low. Now, what does that look like? I showed this scenario where I pulled this fractal and said maybe we chop around in here and then drop into it and that would be a net sideways move. Um, I've 
had people message me and say I was you know oh you were wrong you said the lows would hold well I did and yes then then we broke the lows we broke them again but now look the lows are still kind of holding okay so technically I was wrong because it broke down but also technically I was right because we're still above the lows okay this is a net sideways move from here to here you can see we've done nothing we've just chopped around this low so whether that is right or wrong call it wrong that's fine but one thing we do know is we're going to come and drop into this cycle low okay now is the path higher first then down or do we roll over and come down i don't know nobody knows okay i don't know you don't know everyone is very speculative everyone seems very sure of themselves all we can say for sure is this cycle low is coming into focus and these cycle lows i've been saying this if you go back and watch for the entire time that we'll probably chop around this area then we'll get a pull back into this cycle low and that's longable whether it's from the cycle low a trend line break a trend line break okay wherever it ends up being we know that there's a cycle low coming into focus. So this is true alpha. This has kept me on the sidelines patiently, like a predator, making sure I'm ready to go when the time comes. I'm not jumping in here. I'm not getting, I'm not short in and getting chopped up. I'm not long in the bottom and getting chopped up. Okay, we're just patiently moving sideways, waiting for this cycle low to occur. And then we can take a high probability setup out of here. And I truly believe because of the number of puts, because of the number of shorts, hedges, I truly believe that we are going to have an explosive relief rally. I think it's going to look at least something like this and it's going to have more legs to it. I think we're going to come out of here very, very strong. That, of course, remains to be seen. The same is, of course, true of the Dow. Look at this. Is the Dow breaking out? I don't buy this just yet and you could probably redraw this trend line to make both of these touches on the wicks, this one and this one. So maybe we're still inside this. Like I said, we know we've probably got a bit more sideways. Even if it comes out of here, it's probably going to do something like this first and go... That's where the cycles come into their own. And the NASDAQ, here you go. So same sort of thing. We know there's a bit more patience, but at the end of the month, we can line up some trades for sure. Here's a brilliant example of where patience has worked out. If you go back and watch the video from back here, this green candle, you can see that I outlined a scenario where it does this, forms a base. And then I said we might end up moving the trend line across and taking the long from there. So again, that still remains to be seen, but patience is the biggest asset a trader can have and these cycle counts certainly keep us out of a lot of trouble quite often here's coinbase um, same is true of microstrategy riot marathon all of these we're getting close to the 60-day cycle low and of course for bitcoin and ethereum so you know if you've been watching the channel you know where i stand we're going to drop into this cycle low load up and go make sure you're subscribed if you want to see me do this in real time let's look at apple Again, Apple, like, it's still in no man's land, isn't it? Like, this looks very, oh, it's bullish and golfing. It's just going to roar out of here, maybe. And if it does, if it cracks this trend line, then we know how to act, right? We know how to long this if it cracks this trend line, just like that. But it hasn't cracked it yet. So more patience. Have to be open to seeing a lower low. Have to be open to seeing sideways. Maybe a breakout and a retest resumption if we were to be so lucky. And, of course, the same is true of Tesla. Oil. I said, look, I wonder if we're going to bounce off of this. So far, we have. This kind of looks weak. We'll see. If we're going to break down, then maybe we can entertain short straight away at a loss of this horizontal level. I still think this scenario is in play. Um, it's Friday, so not looking to take on any weekend risk. Still holding a gold short. This was starting to look very good yesterday, although we've wicked back up. But I do expect this to kind of waddle sideways and drop down because of the cycle awareness. Again, the cycle awareness kept us out of buying this breakout, and so did having a breakout retest resumption. That kept us out of getting stopped here. So it's important to be patient. It's important to have the awareness of the cycle counts. Here's Bitcoin. As I said, drop into that cycle low and go. I'm just noticing Ethereum, same thing. So into trendline resistance, does it break it? Who really cares? Because we know this cycle low is coming up. Okay, so even if it breaks out here, it's going to drop down into some sort of cycle low and that becomes a high probability setup with true alpha in the market. And I'm just noticing we just ticked and hit 50 cents for xrp so was this a sort of stop run did it take the stops all, all from below here quite possibly come on xrp push up um i really want to see this breakout sooner rather than later i don't want to see too much chopping around in here that would just be quite annoying so anyway it is what it is long and strong continue to push take a quick look at the dollar like i said likely topped it's friday so we'll see what happens but i think a test of this line is coming if we can break down from this line, then expect risk to fly. But I also, as I've said before, wouldn't be surprised to see this chop around a bit into those cycle lows at the end of the month before breaking down. The market is pricing in a 75 basis point hike, so likely we're going to see this react to that. But of course, we've got our warning line. If we can break down from this blue trend line, then likely we can call this the top, even though this has swept the high. So we'll see how it goes. That's the analysis for today. If you found value here today, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like on the channel. Subscribe if you're not already. If you don't know how the CP line metric works, 
then go back and watch that CP live video. It is um, very, very useful for that sort of thing. If you want to see how I use these cycle counts in combination with trend line breaks to provide true alpha over the market, to provide real time gains captured live on this channel, open and transparent, then make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn the notifications on. In the meantime, enjoy your weekend. All the best from me. Take care. Cheers. Bye.